Hello, my name is Brendan, better known as BK. If you have played in the ESA High School's Cup, you may have seen my name around. I deal with the operations of the Super Smash Bros competition. A little background on myself and my tournament administration experience. I started working on tournaments and competitions when I was in high school. I started with League of Legends for ESL Go For LOLs, which was a weekly competition hosting some of Australia's best League of Legends team. Once I started university, I joined RMIT University in Victoria, and that led me to become the Vice President of the League of Legends slash Games Club in my first year, and I continued to run tournaments and events there. Eventually, I became the president of that club, and then I founded the RMIT Esports and Games Club. During my study at RMIT University, I joined AEL as a tournament admin after submitting and managing teams in their competitions for RMIT University. From there, I became a freelance admin who has worked on a myriad of competitions. You may be familiar with some of the competitions I've worked on, for example, the AEL University League, the ASA High Schools Cup, as well as the recent Commonwealth Games, Rocket League, and Dota competition qualifiers. So, enough about me. How does one run a tournament? The first thing I'm going to discuss is the equipment you need in order to run a tournament. So, one of the most important things when running a tournament is the bracket. Tournament brackets are needed to be able to show players and yourselves as admin who is versing who during the tournament and to be able to show scores and results. What can we use for bracket hosting? Firstly, we have Challenge. This is what we currently use in the ASA High School. Challenge is a simple tournament host that allows you to create and host tournaments on their website. Next up, we have Battlefire. Battlefire is similar to Challenge, but with more integration. For example, match hosting by their system. Following this, we have Start.gg, previously known as Smash.gg. This platform is widely preferred by the FGC and Rocket League communities. It's similar to Battlefy, but is a lot easier to find players and add teams. It also has a wide variety of match hosting capabilities. Now we're moving on to Tournament. Tournament is similar to Battlefy, but has some unique nuances that are sometimes hard to navigate. It also includes match hosting and match integration. Last but not least, we have Planet Nine. Planet Nine is Asus' own tournament platform that combines the ease of communities and competitions together. I will now use Challenge to show you a quick and easy example of how to create a bracket. So after going onto the Challenge webpage, you're greeted with either a login or a sign up button on the top right of the web browser. If you have an account, log in. If you don't, sign up for a free account. After you sign it in or create an account, you'll be greeted by this page. This page will show you where all your tournaments are and allow you to create more tournaments. For example, we'll click on create tournament here and all you have to do is hit tournament. On this tournament page, you'll need to firstly input a tournament name. You can create a unique URL for your tournament or use one created by challenge. Entirely up to you, but you can provide a description and add additional information in the description box. Next, you'll need to choose a game. This can be done by simply searching your game. Next, we need to discuss the type of tournament. What is a single stage tournament and a two stage tournament? A single stage tournament is a tournament where you simply play out the entirety of the bracket and then you have your winner. A two-stage tournament is something like we've been using in Rock Colleague and Overwatch for the ASA High School's Cup. What this means is that you have two stages for this tournament. The first stage often finds the best teams, usually done by putting teams into groups, and then you send the teams who have progressed through that bracket as either the first or second seed, into the second stage of the group, which can often be either A, 
single elimination or a double elimination. Following this, you can choose how to find sign-ups. You can either provide a list for yourself or host a page. For this example, we'll provide a list of participants ourselves. Next, you will need to choose a start time. If you don't have a good start time or you haven't decided yet, you can mark it as tentative. Otherwise, untick that, click on this field here and then choose a start time. Following this, read what each of these little checkboxes will allow you to do. But one very, very helpful option is to head to advanced options, go to permissions and click on share admin access. This way you can actually provide additional access to this bracket to other admi admins of your competition. Last but not least, click save. Now. We'll head to our tournament. In order to add players into your bracket, all you have to do is click on participants on the top of your bracket. On this page, you can either add a player as, sing as just their name. <clears throat> on this page, you can either add a player as just their name, or you can add all the players that you have in one list, either by copy and pasting a pre-existing list or just adding them in but by typing. For example, player 1, player 2, player 3, and so on. After that, all you have to do is click Add. Once you have clicked Add, players will now appear in your bracket. Please note that these players are not seeded yet. You can seed them, or you can shuffle with the seeding. What does seeding mean? Seeding is a way to determine which players are the best and which players follow them and stop the chances of those players versing each other early on in the competition. This allows for the finals to have often the best competitions between these two players or three players or four players depending on how many players are seeded. For this example, all we have to do is hit participants Click Shuffle Seeds and press OK. The players will now appear in the bracket based on the seeding that was randomized. However, you can also still change the seeding on this bracket by moving players up and down. Once your competition is ready, all you have to do is click a Tournament. To report a score in Challenge, simply click the Report Score button. This will bring up a new pop-up where you can actually input the scores. Input the scores by typing it in or clicking on the arrow keys next to the field. Once the score is input, the player will progress the bracket. If you've accidentally made a mistake with the seeding or there are issues with the scores listed, you can reset the entirety of the tournament. However, if there are any issues with just the score, all you have to do is go back to a previous game and edit the score. Make sure you choose the player who won as well, as this often does not automatically appear. If you did accidentally mess up the seeding, all you have to do is head to settings, scroll all the way down, go to advanced options, click on reset or delete, and reset the bracket.
towards the end of the tournament and during, you are actually able to see the standings of all participants. All you have to do is click on standings at the top of the tournament page. Once you finish off the last match, there will be an option to end your tournament. Once you click end tournament, the standings will also appear on this page. Click show more to see the overall standings of all players. In addition to that, you can head to the standings tab to see the placements and how many matches players have won and lost. This concludes the po challenge portion of this video. Now, let's start talking about game platforms. We need to know what game platform we are using when we host a competition. For games that are only on one platform, for example, Super Smash Bros Ultimate, the game platform required is very simple. However, for some games, for example, Rocket League and Overwatch, you may need to specify to competitors which platforms are going to be used for competition. If you need help with this, feel free to take a look at our website, al.org.au forward slash hs to see what platforms are used for each game when we host tournament. So, let's talk about online first. Let's begin with the easier one, an online tournament. So, currently, out of the three games that are being played in the Acer High Schools Cup, all three have online capabilities, with one game requiring a subscription service. For an online tournament, the first thing we need to know is how people are going to communicate with one another. For your schools, you may have a Discord channel set up, or even use one of the Discord channels that we have set up for you in the AAL High School Discord. Next, choose a day and time where everyone is available to play. Maybe try to create a poll to see which day people prefer the most. Following this, you will need to choose a bracket host where you will provide player names and information to formulate a bracket. Now, we're going to go on a bit of a tangent to talk about offline tournaments. So, for offline tournaments, there are additional requirements that may be considered. Most of the online tournament information that we just talked about can be adapted for offline competitions, but you also need to think about the following. Firstly, where can we run the tournament? Maybe try to talk to your teachers to see if there's a classroom or a club room that can be used to run a competition. Secondly, what gear and equipment do we need? Aside from bracket, secondly, what gear and equipment do we need? Aside from the bracket hosting site, what do we need? Consoles, computers, monitors, controllers, peripherals like mouse, keyboard, and headsets. At the end of it, once you formulate a bracket, as long as people are able to see the bracket, it becomes a lot easier for them to see who they are going to verse. This applies for both online and offline tournaments. This concludes the video. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me via Discord for any additional help or even use the AL High School's Discord. Thank you.